What is up ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be discussing the insidious nature of the Oaken Soul mythic item and we're starting right now. Welcome back guys and before we hop into the bread and butter of today's video a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members the support you guys provide is absolutely phenomenal here on the channel I couldn't be doing without you I really mean that don't forget to like and sub if you actually enjoy the content this is going to be the first of I'm pretty sure many conspiracy theories that we're going to have in here so not just pvp related but some lore related stuff and just some otherworldly things as well so what do I even mean about the insidious nature of the open soul mythic item no we're not going to be talking about the path at which you have to go get it, which requires you to stand at 20 predetermined lock boxes in Merkmire and hopefully pick a lock to get a lead. Um, if you don't actually pick the lock, you have a less than 1% chance. And if you actually pick the lock, I think it's like a 5% chance or something. No, no, no. We're not going to talk about that, that, that four to five hour absolute shit show of a lead, which is just literally tossing to waste your time. It offers no creative influence. It, it, it It's just they're there to waste your time, essentially. Uh, the rest of the leads, yeah, cool. World bosses, go for them, some things, yada, yada. But the lockbox one in particular, I can make a whole nother video about, which is uh, pretty nutty. I'm not even going to grind the Oaken Soul Ring because there's so many people camping these gosh darn spawn boxes. So yeah. But what we're going to be talking about is the Oaken Soul Ring and what it does. Um, it's actually very authentic, very left field, very out of the box for Zoss, which might be a little too out of the box. So when has Zoss actually came up with a unique idea for their game? In, in, in terms of PvP, you know, uh, Oak and Soul Ring, yeah, has all kinds of buffs. You know, uh, all the numbers are exactly the same. Um, all the new sets come out or, you know, just pretty much copy pasta numbers. You know, r really nothing new. Griffin's Reprisal was pretty cool. I actually like that, uh, that five piece set. But the Oak and Soul Ring, while it does give you all these amazing major buffs the, 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 there's one key component to the rink um it does require you however to only have a one bar setup and we're also not going to talk about all the toxic one bar builds which i've encountered which um i absolutely love by the way contrary to popular belief i think this mythic item has brought a lot to the table when it comes to ingenuity and macgyver ship when it comes to builds um i ran across a, a perma atro pet sork build you know fml i came across a couple damn near perma corrosive dk builds which is pretty interesting um perma standard builds for group play um it actually does have a lot of viability and surprisingly enough i've not seen hardly any werewolves wear it which is uh very uh profound to me uh, i'm glad the community's out there putting out you know just, just just different content different builds so why am i calling this ring insidious so when you take a look at what Oaken Soul does, it gives you a crap load of major buffs, but it does limit you to a one bar only, which is uh, it's kind of out there. It's a, it's a pretty cool concept. I wish I would thought of that myself, but is it really something that Zoss is innovative enough to think about? It is the real question. And why would they make this ring? Uh, undoubtedly, it's probably the best mythic item um, out there when it comes to fun, when it comes to build variability, when it comes to just getting the cogwheels turning on what each class is particularly capable of you know gank builds of perma corrosive like we mentioned before so again it, it kind of got me thinking so one bar builds okay so it's literally taking half your abilities away so is this mythic item going to cater to the the new player coming into eso is it to you know kind of help them out because a, a lot of the the newer players are run into especially you know in zergs you know whatever um they rarely ever buff up on their back bar anyway so if you're not gonna use both bars what's the point of having them right um, no, I, uh, I I don't think it's for the new players at all. I also don't think it's for us uh, at all, guys. Um, my conspiracy theory is that the Open Soul Ring solely exists in ESO to, quite frankly, limit the amount of actions per minute that these servers have to calculate in PvP. So what do I mean by the API actions per minute? If you guys uh, play um, uh, StarCraft, you know exactly what that means. Pretty much uh, the higher your action per minute is, the more efficient you are. So the more calculations that have to be done thereof. So let's say, for example, every single person in Serial is running the Oaken Soul Ring. That right there is a 50% reduction in the amount of calculations that the servers actually have to handle. So what does that mean exactly? So we all know that there has been an upgrade in the server performance, but here as of late, it seems to be dwindling. I'm not sure what is causing that. Um, I, I'm, I'm not a techie. I'm not a 
computer science major so i'm not really sure what's going on on the the back end of zoss's part but i do notice my frames are dropping quite a bit my latency is just fine latency is not a problem at all but i will notice my frames are ju just drop astronomically and i have a pretty decent rig you know 1080 i mean it's it, it should be able to handle it and it's just not here the past couple of weeks so the main bullet point i want you guys to really hone in on is the Oconsole ring here for a quick fix for Zoss. So they don't necessarily have to put in the rest of the work, the rest of the time to finish upgrading the servers, to finish extrapolating whatever changes that they need to increase performance and in not just Cyrodiil, but also in Tamriel and in ESO PVE. Which would make sense, you know, again, to my example about, let's say 100% of the people ran the Oconsole ring, that would theoretically mean that you could double the amounts of population in Cyrodiil right now, at this very instant, and the servers would be perfectly fine, right? And here's another point. You actually have to pay $40 for this DLC in order to have access to this mythic item. So if you really think about it and really split hairs and get down to the bread and butter, the, the core concept of the Open Soul Ring, you're actually paying Zoss to have access to this mythic item to give them an excuse to not finish upgrading their servers and increasing performance throughout ESO because you're limiting the amount of actions per minute that the server calculations have to handle, which therein you know, leads to you know, more money in their pockets at the end of the day. So, I mean, re really dwell on this. So you're actually paying yourself for a quick fix, a band-aid fix for ESO PvP and probably PvE as well. I'm not too much of a PvE junkie, but I have heard that some of that lag has spilled in over through Serial as well. So just some food for thought guys um i don't normally do things like this i do find conspiracy theories like this um, very very interesting um is this the true intent behind the open soul ring yeah probably not but who knows um this mythic item is so unique and so out of field that a lot of thought has obviously went into this ring and though the 100 percent people obviously aren't going to be running the open soul ring in pvp it's still going to be a quintessential part of a mass majority of a lot of builds right so yeah let me know what you guys think down in the comments is 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 horcrux off his hinges has he been uh has he not uh, opened his his specific fruit punch monster drink which which i can't actually open because i, I bite my fingernails down to the quick so i gotta pry it open with a pen and then open it there we go much better let me uh let me take a sip here and really think about this yeah so is Horcrux really off his hinges um, for saying this? Let me, again, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I'd be interesting to, to see your guys' thoughts. And as well, if you also have any conspiracy theories that you want to bring to my attention, that you want me to talk about, um, by all means, hit me up in the Discord, leave them down in the comments, uh, message me anytime in-game. I'd be more happy to look into it, kind of give my, uh, give my two cents on it. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the patch. You console folk, I feel so bad for you having to farm some of these mythic items. I'm not going to lie to you. The Open Soul one's going to be an absolute bitch for you guys. And there's also one more trial lead. I, 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 for, I forget the name of the mythic. I'm just rambling at this point. But you actually have to do a trial and it has no feasibility in PvE. It's only a PvP set. So uh, that's uh, that's kind of nutty. You know, you know like kind of kicking the face of the PvP community. <laughs> cough, cough. But anyway, I divulge. Uh, let me know what you guys think again down in the comments. Uh, this has been Horcrux. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and if you want to help to support the channel, the best way to do so is with a simple like and sub. But if you want to go a little bit further, I do have Patreon as well as YouTube memberships. YouTube memberships going forward this patch, I'm going to put out my personal bills just for my YouTube memberships and my Patreon tiers. Um, it's going to be found nowhere else. Um, I'm not going to post what I run kind of all stream just because it's really cancerous and quite frankly my play style isn't what everyone else's playstyle is. It's actually a very niche type of turn and burn playstyle, which most people really don't give two, uh, two shits about. But um, I won't be holding those builds um, just for my community members and also my Patreon supporters. And also guys on Patreon, if you want access to all my live streams, if you want one-on-one -on -one PVP coaching, I have all of that available on my channel. Uh, you just just, just, just hit up the Patreon tier, see me up in Discord, let me know who you are and whatever you need in PVP, whatever help you need, you, you need help on builds, you need help on uh, your rotations. You need help on this class, the class specific matchups. Like for example, the Dragon Eye against the Templar, uh, Nightblade against the Sork, yada yada. If you need help with any of that, guys, please hit me up. I'm more than happy to be available anytime for you all. And uh, enough of the shameless plug at the end of the video. I'm peacing out. Enjoy the patch, guys. And have a great day. Peace.